What's going on, y'all, man? We're talking all SEC teams, man. First, second, and third. Did did it did it get it right? The voters. Let's look at it, man. Let's talk about it. Some of the top players we have here in the SEC, even in the country. Now, I thought Jackson Dart was a pretty good pick at quarterback spot. Um, I thought he was one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC. I know y'all gonna say Quinn Ewers, who got second team all SEC. I think Dart has been better. Now, what's hurt Dart is the big games, winning the big games. Struggled against Florida. First multi-interception game in like over five, no, over three seasons for him. Just not winning the big spots, but he unequivocally has been the best. When we look at the SEC, it's really supposed to be Carson Beck and obviously um, Jalen Milrow. Hasn't been the case. Who else in the SEC has played better than Dart really at quarterback? I'll wait. Next up, I like the running back list as well with Dylan Sampson and Jarquez Hunter. Jarquez Hunter is one of the best running backs we have in the country. I think he's going to be a steal for whoever gets him. Really liked it that here. The receivers, I really like Ryan Williams. I think he's had a great season. I would like to see Trey Harris, respectfully. Now, that's not over Ryan Williams. Luther Burden also has had a good season for Missouri. But I feel like you got to find some some type of way to get Trey Harris here on the first team. You know what I'm saying? Either one, whether it's Burden or even Williams. Williams has been electric, don't get me wrong. But remember, Trey Harris had over a 1,000-yard season. I don't think Williams has had that this year. He's getting close to it. But he's not had a thousand yard season. Next up, uh, this is an underrated pick, Eli Stowers, one of the best tight ends in the SEC. Phenomenal year for him, obviously with Di uh, Diego Pavia, like that pick as well. The defensive line, um, with the Kelvin Banks Jr., Texas, great year for him. Will Campbell as well. Uh, offensive line wise, Tate Rallis is that dude. I watched him when they played Georgia Tech. Yo, opening up big time holes, protecting the quarterback. He is that dude, man. Love to see him on this list as well. In, in addition to Cooper Mays at the center position, another outstanding stuff. Now, defensively, the one I think got robbed a little bit, maybe not first team, maybe second team, Dylan Stewart, the true freshman phenom we talked about earlier. But Kyle Kennard, phenomenal, man. Had a big time year for South Carolina going into the draft. Should be a top 10 pick. He was great this year. Nick Scorton and what he did with, with Texas A&M, man. Absolute beast. He had that one game. He just went bananas. Um, I think it was against, it wasn't LSU. I think it was against Missouri. But dude went bonkers. Like, they didn't have an answer for him. Uh, Nate Scorton's that dude. Another outstanding piece as well. I like James Pierce Jr. of, of Tennessee. So, another pretty good pick. Now, linebacker spot is, is a little bit where I don't understand. Like, how is Anthony Hill not first team? Now, I like Jahad Campbell. He was great. Danny Stutzman? I don't know, man. I, I like the Anthony Hill uh, Jr.'s. You're better. Now, Whit Weeks was a beast. Over 100 tackles this year for LSU. One of the best quarter uh, linebackers in the SEC. Love that he got honored in that way. And then DBs. All right. Now, let's give respect to Malachi Moore. But, Ben, besides Malachi Moore, why wasn't Malachi Starks on here? Almost eradicates this list, bro. You're talking about a Jim Thorpe winner is not going to make, or not Jim Thorpe winner, but a Jim Thorpe finalist is not going to make all SEC first team? That's crazy to me. So I think like DB, they could have did better at Trey Amos, you know, great year. Um, uh, Jedi Bur Baron, great year. But come on, man. Mal how is Malachi Starks not on there? Don't make no sense. All right, second team. Same thing I kind of said here. I mean, Quinn Ewers, I see why you would give it to him. Um, definitely had a pretty good season. I don't know what it is when he plays Georgia, but he plays like dog-ish. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what it is, but definitely needs to be better there. I like Raheem Sanders, man. He was potent. That's the reason why South Carolina, South Carolina won all them games. It went 4-1. Um, and I think against you know in their last five or something like that, but it's being big time teams beating Clemson's of the world. He was phenomenal. Them beating Texas A&M, which, which I predicted them to do. Uh, Le'Veon Moss was another one. Unfortunately, went down with injury, or I think he would have been first team. But look at the difference with Texas A&M with him on the field and him off. You know what I'm saying? Him playing and him not playing. We seen it in the offense. It's just dynamic running back, man. I think he's one of the best in the country. And then same thing with second team. Where is Trey Harris, bro? Wide receiver. Now, Keandre Lambert-Smith was good. But, yo, you don't put Trey Harris on there? Come on, man. I'm, I, Trey Harris is better than Andrew Armstrong. Respectfully, dog. Got to be better there. I, I, I don't like it. Now, I like Gunnar Helm at the tight end spot for Texas, man. Uh, another one of those, like, just really nice tight ends, you know what I'm saying, that can just do a lot for you. Um, has some high upside, you know what I'm saying, like what he can do. Get into the sweet spot of the zones. Good intermediate target. Good in the red zone. Can block. He's that dude. Now, offensive line-wise, and like I said, Georgia offensive line was really good this year. Dylan Fairchild, another stud at the tackle spot. Like I said, we're not seeing them play. Very rarely did Carson Beck really get touched like that. There wasn't no team dominating Georgia's really offensive line like that, bro. 
You know what I'm saying? So rightfully deserved. Emory Jones is another stud out there for um, LSU. Like what he was able to do this year, man. Had a phenomenal year um, as well, in addition to Jared Wilson for Georgia. Center, another really good player for the, for the Bulldogs. Now, this one I did like. I think barring injury, like if he didn't get injured, Mikel Williams is a name that would have been first team all SEC. But you see what he can do, bro. Game record. We seen it against Texas the first game. He has some remnants of that in, in the SEC championship game. That kid is for real. If he can stay healthy, he has the makings to be an elite player at the next level in the NFL. That's how good he is. And like I said, these two names right here, Anthony Hill Jr. and Jalon Walker, I think they both should be first team all SEC. Both phenomenal players. They're both versatile. They can rush the passer. They can play coverage. You know what I'm saying? They can lay big hits. Those, both of those guys are some of the best in the country. I don't know how the second team should be first team. And the same thing as we said right here, Malachi Stars. Come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? Second team, and he's a Jim Thorpe finalist along with Caleb Downs? What are we doing, bro? There, there's no way he shouldn't be on that list. Now, I like Will Lee, and I like Isaac Smith. Underrated guys getting some love right here. I think they're going to be special, continuing to go forward. But, man, Malachi Starks, they really missed there. Defensive line-wise, I didn't mention, but up here, like Mason Thomas from Oklahoma. I thought he had a pretty good year for the Sooners. And I like Braden Swinson also as well for LSU. All right, last but not least is third-team SEC. I like Lenore Sellers here. You know what I'm saying? Another pretty good spot for him. You know what I'm saying? Continue to come on. I want to see him take that progression the next step as far as throwing the football. But yeah, like as a runner, like he's dangerous, bro. Like him and Raheem Sanders in the same backfield is not fair, bro. Like I'm, I'm going to be a whole 100% honest with y'all. It just ain't fair. You know what I'm saying? So he has a bright upside. I want to see what he can do. Trevor Etienne, uh, you know what I'm saying? When he played, he was great. But injury really set him back, man. So... That one I'm kind of eh about because, you know what I'm saying, I don't feel like we got the full gamut to see what he could do. I feel like it was a lot of good backs in the SEC, but I'm not mad at it. Qu uh, Contribion Wisner for Texas, I agree. Started to come on him and Jaden Blue in that backfield. Continue to get better and better as the season progressed on. Um, like what he was able to do um, as well out of the backfield. So I like him as third team all SEC. Now, Trey Harris is one, like I, like I said, I felt got disrespected. I think he should be in that top conversation as far as receiver this year. You know, definitely should be uh, second team, if not first team. You know, I thought he was phenomenal till he got injured. Next up, another tight end I really like, man, Mason Taylor. I, I've been seeing it with LSU for the longest. I'm like, Garrett Nussmeyer, I think he has, I think he could be a good quarterback. But they throw too many strikes down the field to Kyron Lacey and several other uh, targets down the field. Use this guy more, this Mason Taylor kid. And I think if going into the next year, if they can use him more, they'll be just fine. Like, this kid is, is a stud, I'm telling you. Like, they got to use him more. But like that, he got the nod for third team All-SEC. And in offensive line, why some more underrated guys, the, the Fernando Carmona of Arkansas, like what he was doing this year with the Razorbacks, thought he continued to get better. Um, and I really like Javante Spragans of Tennessee. Those are some guys that caught my eye off this list that I think well deserve of All-SEC team. All right, now let's go to the defense. Now, this guy right here is a stud. This Sir, Sir Ter Son Terrain Perkins, yo, dog. Seeing, his, seeing him play. Like, yo, you better put multiple bodies on him if you don't want him to just disrupt the game. That was one I really liked, um, potentially. Only one I feel like that maybe they could have replaced because they did they did three Ole Miss guys and they did Shamar Stewart of Texas a and I felt like as a true freshman, they should have put Dylan Stewart on there. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong, the Ole Miss um, front seven is crucial. You know what I'm saying? But I think maybe over this guy, Shamar Stewart, I think um, what's his name should have got in uh dylan stewart like honestly like come on man like what are we doing here that's another one i like that they gave some love to chat chash uh chambliss he was another one i thought had a pretty good year so like that he got some love and some respect deontay lawson is another one for uh alabama that had a really big season had multiple impact games for them one i would like to see and i'm glad that he's on here is dan jackson that dude is for real you know what i'm saying watch multiple of his games and you talk about flying to the ball texas georgia tech Several other SEC opponents that they played. Dan Jackson from North Hall. Yo, some sirs. And the other one I wanted to mention is Andrew Mabuka. That dude right there is something serious, man. I thought he should have got maybe all, all SEC second team with just what he was able to do. You know what I'm saying? Out there, I think he has high-end potential. Um, and that dude is for real. You know what I'm saying? It's another one that definitely deserves more credit and praise, in my humble opinion. Them hits, that chaos he was causing, some serious. And I like Dalen Everett. That DB right there, he was crucial in that, that game and that win against Texas. That's another really good player. That's my thoughts. I didn't talk about the special teams, man, um, you know, with the kickers in them. I didn't watch a lot of that. I watched a lot of the game. But comment below your thoughts on the all-SEC team.